Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. The week that was my catch up on my yarn adventures for the past week and a little live chat at the end with a question for you. Today is Sunday, March the 26th, which happens to be our wedding anniversary, our 46th wedding anniversary. Yes, it's a long time. Or as Thing would say, he served two life sentences and he's about to start the third. He's a joker. Our anniversary is a segue into my happy mail I received this week. Because I think in the past video I said life has been a bit of a roller coaster of emotion. Well, the roller coaster has come to an end and now I've stepped onto the hamster wheel of life. I am constantly going in circles. And nothing seems to be improving or getting better. However, my happy mail came early this week and really put a smile on my face and helped with that hamster wheel of life. I received, or we received, an anniversary card from Barbara Leinhard, my friend, subscriber in the USA. It's so thoughtful of you, Barbara. I can't believe you remembered. I'm terrible with dates. And yes, so kind and so appreciated because it did give my week a good start. Reeves and I have really enjoyed seeing your pictures posted of you at the baseball and the comments you make about the different games. Um, yeah, it was really fun to see how much enjoyment you were getting. Reeves is really into Japanese baseball. We did stay up late and watch um, Australia play Cuba in the hope that Australia would make it to Miami, but unfortunately they didn't. But this year's team performed better than ever before. So we, as a country, or a nation, are improving a baseball. Um, I really appreciate you sharing the photos with us because it was a lot of fun and you made us feel like we were there experiencing it with you. So thank you for that. I know Reeves loved it and he wanted me to say thank you. So. I had a visit from my friend Ulia, which was really nice, and she surprised me with a gift. Um, she thinks it was a Christmas gift because she forgot to give it to me. She can't remember why she gave me, got this for me, but it was a gift, and it was beautiful. Um, those people who have followed me for a while would know I love polar bears. I collect porcelain, ceramic, and glass polar bears, and her gift was this beautiful glass polar bear. I am a little nervous about holding it in here because I am on a tile floor. If I drop it, it will shatter. It has a beautiful pretty face, so I think it's a female glass. And it is filled with something white. I don't know what the white is. Um, Reeves and thing can't work it out. But yeah, isn't that gorgeous? And that was her gift to me. So that was a highlight of my week. So as far as yarn chat and what have I been up to as projects, my finished objects, I only have two for you. First up is the Bod Hatterpalooza. And this week's was a waffle stitch tutorial or pattern of this particular beanie. I made this uh, in Spotlight USA style. I've now decided some of the balls are like 12 ply and some are like 10 ply. But yes. This is my finished object for this week's hat. 52 ha hats I think we're making, one a week, with our host Mad Mimi's uh, and Crochet and Farming, Laura. Make sure you check her out. I really did enjoy making this. I know when I was making it, I think, oh, I like the waffle stitch. I should make a scrap blanket in waffle stitch. That may be on my project list. But yeah, it turned out well. It is small um, because I took it down a hook size. The crystal from Bag I Day used a 6mm, I think, and I used a 5mm because I wanted a smaller hat. It doesn't fit me, so I have a buff head. That's why she's on the model. But that is my hat. Now, talking hats. I watch a podcaster, I think it's almost a year I've been watching her. Ruth loves to knit. She is an amazing knitter. I really enjoy her podcast and seeing what she's made and all the things she has to talk about. And it was a couple of months back, 
a month back, can't remember, she mentioned that her daughter had been making these crocheted hats for her, she made one for herself and then her friends wanted them, and yeah, I was interested, and I did mention to Reeves about these hats, and he goes, they are popular with the young, you should make one. So shopping my stash, I've actually done a one skein wonder. Now, it doesn't fit this head very well, but here you go. It's the cat hat, or supposed to be a cat hat, like that. It has a rolled up brim, so you can roll it up or down, depending on how you want to wear it. And here, I made one. I actually did enjoy it. And I used Lime Brand Wool East Tonal in the colour Vermilion, which is red, of course. And in the um, skein or ball, it, now it's weird because it's a 113 gram ball and there are 124 yards or 113 metres. And I call it my one skein wonder because that's all I have left. Now it is big enough to fit me and there will be photos at the end of me modelling it because, you know, I said I would model some of the hats I make even though I don't rock a hat. Now, if I was going to continue doing my local community market, I would make a few more of these around winter time because I think they would be popular. And they do whip up really quickly, being a five weight, because that's what Woolies is here, the tonal, which I think is a bulky yarn. And I used a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. I think it called for a 6 and I used a 5.5 millimeter, which I'm glad I did because it fits me and I have a buff head. So that is my second hat and my second finished object for the week. I have been working on some large knitting projects that require concentration and uh, take up more time. I don't generally show whips unless I'm confident they're going to turn out because uh, Murphy's Law, if I show them, they go wrong. But hopefully in the near future, I have some, whips to sh uh, some finished objects to show you what I've been knitting. I've also got two Amigurumi projects on the um, go, which are taking quite a bit of time. One is a knitted pattern that um, Re Thing bought me last Christmas, no, Christmas before, and I finally decided to do it. It is a bit challenging for me because it's a bit more advanced than the skills that I have. And I'm also doing a large crochet amigurumi and that's taking its time because a lot of it's bobble stitch and my old arthritic hands, no not old, my arthritic hands have trouble with doing a lot of bobble stitch for long periods of time. So I did do a bit of yarn shopping. I know my goal this year is to shop my stash reduce my yarn stock, including my scraps, but I've become very addicted to amigurumi. I am the crazy amigurumi lady, and I saw a pattern from overseas I really like and want to make. Excuse me, I get hiccups, nervous hiccups. So, I went on Yarn Substitute to see what they could offer as a substitute yarn to make this pattern. It is a free pattern. I don't know if I mentioned that. And lo and behold, there is a yarn from here, 98% match. And the yarn is, um, oh, got my glasses. Good, got, good job, it's the uh, cheap ones, not the expensive ones. Four Seasons Marvel printed eight ply, or equivalent to DKL three weight, in the color Parrot, which is very similar to what they have in the picture. But that was a 98% match. There is 270 meters in a 100 gram ball. And I bought two because I think that's about how many I will need. And they happened to be 30% off. So I got them for $3 each, which is great. However, this Amigurumi pattern will have to join the queue. Because once I finish one of my others, I want to make my otters. Every day I go, I'll start the others. No, I made a rule. I have to finish one before I start a new one. Otherwise, I just end up with like a mountain of whips come December. So the other thing I picked up was, because I do really love this yarn, it is 100% acrylic, lovely and soft, Lion Brand Heartland, Heartland 
this raggedy ball which I've tidied up a bit was on a clearance table for five dollars I think it's normally sells close to ten dollars and I love that and I like the color because it's got it's a brown with like an orange mustardy fleck I don't know if you can see it on camera there but yeah it is so soft so I decided I would pick that up but that is all the yarn I have bought but I am still clearing my yarn stock and reducing it. So that is my yarn chat um, for the week that was. The coming week, I'll just keep working on projects and hopefully I'll have some finished objects to show you next week and a bit more yarn chat. We're about to move on to live chat, so if you're not into that, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. All the links to the channels that I've talked about, the tutorials, the patterns will be in the description below. Don't forget to check out Laura from Mad Mimi um, Crochet and Farming. I really enjoy her down-to-earth videos and Ruth loves to knit because if you're into knitting, she does some awesome work and definitely is a lovely podcast to listen to. So, life chat. <laughs> hamster wheel of life so today being an anniversary I've tried to be upbeat but it's been very difficult because yesterday I was really dragged down and it's I didn't sleep well and it's gone into today I decided I would ask the powers that be and the professionals that um, will be running our community market the reason for the 80% price increase apparently you don't do that I've had several emails that haven't been um, informative. Um, one has been really lovely. One was patronizing, condescending and dismissive. But yesterday's email was just unbelievable from a professional businessman who somehow got a hold of my questioning and decided to buy into the argument. It was a three page email and um, basically I am he finished up with, I am a nervous old Nelly um, and I just need to cop the 80% price increase on the chin. Now, I got weaves to read it and thing to read it to get a varying age range of opinions. And as Reeves put it, and I quote, this businessman for a professional is mansplaining all over a three-page email. He's assuming is uninformed and he did no research it is really quite ridiculous um, the thing being is, is I can see why it got you down but it is not worth taking up real estate in your head you don't give him free real estate up here so yeah basically you don't ask you just pay up and get on with it I've pretty much decided I won't be doing markets down there unless there is um, some reasoning that they rethink their price increase and even that because of who running it is running it and the way they've treated me um, with such little respect I'm not sure I want to be there there are other markets I could try on a casual basis which is what I like to do so yes I just feel um, work in proof but for me for some reason the work problem was a Peter the uh, the market problems are Peter and I believe it comes in threes so we had some interesting exciting trouble middle of the week um, I was in the shower and I could hear our dog Saxon barking his head off like unbelievably so and I'm thinking we've got an intruder I got out the shower and there's Reeves inside our sliding door to the patio closed with Saxon and on the outside this thing with a broom and a water spray bottle and yes it was a snake Saxon had gone to go to the bathroom and discovered a snake and barked and scared it into a place hidden behind some stuff on the patio and thing was trying to cozy it out and get it to move along now it was a slaty gray which is not venomous but it is um, it can get aggressive and it can give you a nasty bite that'll make you sick. Um, we've been advised before you spray them with extremely cold water and usually they will slither away and find a new place to live. But if they do arc up, 
and get aggressive, you call the snake handler, which we do have the number uh, close to hand for a snake handler. This lady grey decided that it would move on and thing got it to move on into my favourite garden bed. So this weekend I didn't get out in that garden bed, um, mainly because I didn't want a visit from Pete the Python, as I've nicknamed him, um, and have him stick out his head and say hello. I'm going to give him time to move. Snakes this time of year for us, when we've had so much rain and there's water lying around, especially slaty greys, they try to get to higher ground where it's dry. And that's why sometimes it's just easy to move them on. Um, we don't kill them. If we need a snake handler, we'll call him. Sometimes he'll charge us, sometimes he won't. I always pay him when he comes out in torrential rain because he does travel a long way. Again, it's like he move, he he generally catches them and moves them, and relocates them if they're venomous and there's someone chasing that particular snake for venom, the venom to make vaccines. He makes sure that they go there and they're always kept alive. Nothing is killed. I don't like snakes. Oh, I really don't. And I freak out. So as Rib said, it's a good job you were in the shower because Saxon would be barking, you'd be screaming and the snake would be having a heart attack. Anyway, I named him Pete the Python because I figured it comes in threes. Two Peters are driving me nuts, so why not a third? <laughs> That was our exciting bit of, for the week, we don't do a lot, but yeah, we had a visitor, an unwelcome visitor. <laughs> so I said there was a question about life and it's about getting old. So 40 to 100, I'll explain later why I chose 40. As I get older, especially since 2023, I feel like I'm becoming a grumpy old lady. Now, when I was younger, you heard grumpy old men, grumpy old lady, and I thought it was just the thing. But I'm asking you, do we become grumpy old people? Um, do we become less tolerant? Do you think little things annoy us? And is it because we're getting old or we've just lived a life and can't be bothered with it anymore? The reason I ask is I went to my um, medical centre to pick up a script where I've been going for years and there was a new receptionist on and she spoke to me like I was some little old woman on her deathbed, you know, that wasn't going to make it through the door. Now the script I was picking up wasn't anything serious to give her that reason to speak to me like that. The receptionist that was next to her, I've known for a while and she could see my face and she kept going to her to try and get her to stop, but she didn't. I left there feeling angry and annoyed because I'd walked in there under my own steam. I'm quite capable. And just because I am advancing in years doesn't mean you speak to me like that. But I didn't say anything. I did go back to work and run into a lady in my office block of a similar age. And I asked her about it. And she said, 15 years ago, there were things that were just a waters off, water, like water off a duck's back. Didn't bother her. And she said, but now... Everything annoys me, especially when I'm treated like I'm getting old. And, she, and I said, is it because we're getting old that we're like that? She said, I don't know. But it's so annoying when you talk to like some decrepit old thing that's ready to be put into a coffin. And that was part of the email from my, the three page email. He just dismissed me as someone being old, silly, you know really got no brain to think with so yes I guess my question to you is as you get older do you think you become less tolerant for no particular reason other than you can't be bothered with it how do you feel when you're spoken to like some little decrepit old person does it annoy you do you humor them or do you actually like my older sister she speaks up and says things which brings me to 40 why I said 40 my older sister, when she was turning 40, had a massive meltdown. She was approaching 40, which meant she was about to go over the hill. She was such a drama queen. I swear to God, she would have won an Oscar for her performance. And that's fine, except it didn't stop there. Every birthday since she has 40, 
we go through the same drama. I'm so old. Look at my skin. Look at my hair. Oh God, I'm getting so old. She's now in her 70s, so that's how long we've been putting up with it. So it got, it's got to the point, I prefer to ring her on her birthday and use an excuse to hang up to on her when she starts rather than visit her. Because it's just like, you're, it's just life. Get on with it. You know, when your time's up, your time's up. And let's face it, no one gets out of here alive. So yes, how do you feel about growing old and people who treat you like an old person when it's uncalled for? Let me know in the comments below. So guys, that's it for me this week. I hope you've enjoyed my finished objects, my yarn chat and my little life chat. And let me know in the comments below what you think. Just be polite. Until next time, stay safe, stay well. I promise I will try and improve my tolerance and not let little things upset me. And make sure you have one crafty day this week, making possibly some amigurumi. Bye for now. Go find my clicker.